Hello and welcome back to the homestead in eastern Oklahoma. I am Bear with BearIndependent.com in for RefugeMedical.com today. In the last video in our mini series on the March algorithm and tactical combat casualty care. We've discussed massive bleeding, tourniquets and pressure bandages. We've discussed airway. We've discussed respiratory and chest seals. We've discussed circulation, prioritization of care, care under fire. We've discussed uh, head injury and hypothermia. We've discussed everything else in the March E algorithm. And now we're to March pause, which is becoming more and more in vogue these days to discuss PAWS. And so as part of working that algorithm, we deal with massive bleeding first, then airway, respiratory circulation, head injury, hypothermia, everything else, and then pause, pain management, antibiotics, wounds, and splinting. So depending on who you are and what funny letters you have after your name, it's going to dictate how you address these things. So pain management, um, you very likely don't have the ability to write prescriptions or to disperse uh, prescription medication or to administer prescription medication. If you're a paramedic, you may. Uh, TEMS, tactical EMS, you may. Doctors, you may. Uh, but what does that mean for the average civilian? Well, pain management can be as simple as something as, uh, you can research what is a combat pill pack. I'm not gonna tell you here, uh, for liability reasons, because I'm not making that recommendation to you, but research what's a combat pill pack, because some of those are prescription medications. Some of them aren't. Tylenol and Motrin? Tylenol and Motrin. A little bit goes a long way, right? And so having some of that in your kit, over-the-counter medicines that you can administer, is a good idea for pain management. Antibiotics. Um, in a combat pill pack, you're going to have a broad spectrum antibiotic. And the reason for that is a foreign body has entered your body. There's been a penetration to your body. You've broken the skin. And as I discussed previously, when we were talking about wound packing, um, the, one of the first things that's gonna happen as we elevate to a higher level of care is immediately broad spectrum antibiotics are gonna be run, whether it's intravenously or per os, which means orally of the mouth because you've had a foreign body in you. You've had other people rubbing their hands all over you and sticking their hands in you. Uh, bad stuff has happened. The nasty world has come inside of your body. We have to deal with that. And so you might think about what provisions do you have as a civilian to be, be able to administer antibiotics if needed in a situation like this. Wounds, we get back to wounds. Wound treatment, we've already discussed in great detail, both during the massive hemorrhage portion of the March algorithm, and also in the circulation portion of the March algorithm, and then also in the E portion, the everything else, to go back and check those wounds again to make sure that we've rendered appropriate aid so that we don't still have bleeding going on. We're addressing every wound that we can. Well, it begs the question, what about long-term? What provisions do you have for long-term wound care? We actually have what's called the wound care bucket at Refuge Medical, it's designed to treat one grievous injury for 30 days or multiple smaller injuries for 60 days, all in a five gallon bucket. And you don't have to go buy that from us. You can go look at what I put in that bucket and piecemeal that together yourself, just like you can any one of these kits. You can go look at the kit online and see what the contents are and piecemeal that together yourself if that's what your budget will allow. But wounds, we want to address wounds. Oh, wounds are the whole reason we are medically intervening in the first place. That, that's why we're here, that's why we're doing this, that's why we broke out the first aid kit. So yet again, another examination of the wounds. Do we have bleeding? Is there seepage that's happening? Do we need to change dressings? Do we need to apply additional tourniquets? Are there burns that we didn't see but we see now? Is there debridement that needs to happen? Is there embedded gravel and you know liquefied concrete and bad stuff in the wounds? Have we cleaned this wound? Do I need to fix this? That it's the constant, constant attentive care of the wounds is a recurring theme throughout the March pause algorithm because that's why we're here in the first place. No wounds, no need to medically intervene. And the last is splinting. And this can be as simple as an ACE bandage and a SAM splint, which we have in many of our kits, or a tactical tra traction device, compound fractures, which we sell as a component at Refuge Medical. 
Um, if you can, with splinting, if you have broken bones, whether it's a compound or it's a closed fracture, you want to isolate those broken bones as much as you can. Splint those up, wrap them up, especially if it's compound. You may have had to apply a tourniquet at this point because of the bleeding that occurred because of the compound fracture. And so, and I'm not advocating, unless you know what the hell you're doing, for you to be setting bones in the field. Typically speaking, with a compound fracture, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the nastiness with the gauze to separate it from the outside world. So it could be as simple as if I've got a compound uh, fracture, I'm going to wrap it up like this with gauze, right, where the bone is sticking out. I want to immobilize the bone, then I want to immobilize the joint. Maybe I'm going to take my triangle bandage, right, I'll tie that off, take my triangle bandage, tie this up, protect this, I don't want to be bumping into this, and it's going to hurt real bad back to pain management. You know, what can, what can we administer legally to take the edge off of this situation, right? Maybe I need a SAM splint, maybe I need a, um, an ACE bandage, or I'm gonna use my pressure bandage, which is just a big ACE bandage. Uh, the adventure kit that we offer at Refuge Medical has a lot of provision for that. In fact, we market it as, uh, it's good for band-aids, bullet holes, and broken bones, and it is. Same thing with the stomp bag, which is a SEAL Team Operational Medical Pack has provision for, uh, it's got a C-spine collar, it's got SAM splints, it's got ACE bandages, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. The crash and smash kits, which are vehicle kits, which were actually designed in conjunction with our buddy Devin out in California that writes his Baja trucks. Um, you know, it's designed to go a thousand miles at 140 miles an hour through the desert. If you wreck, it's a bad wreck, right? Well, it's got C-spine collar immobilization, it's got uh, SAM splints, it's got pressure bandages, it's got um, your ACE bandages, it's got everything you need to do field expedient splinting. If you're in a tactical environment, if you're doing pew-pew stuff, you might think about traction splints, uh, but you also need to know how to use traction splints, which again comes back to training. And so for us as the average civilian out there, if we have a compound fracture, like I said, we're going to cover, that means there's been a break in the skin, right? We're going to cover that up. Do not, unless you know what you're doing, set the bone. If you set it wrong, you're going to further complicate issues, okay? You probably, it's going to depend, but based upon the rate of blood flow from the wound, you may need to apply a tourniquet. We're going to wrap that up. We're going to immobilize that. And then if we need to splint it, we'll splint it. If we need to sling it, we'll sling it so that we're not using this anymore and elevate to a higher level of care. And people will ask, what do I do if there's not a higher level of care? You come to class and you learn how to deal with these things for real. Um, you know, there's been a lot of issues in the world uh, where people have been denied service at hospitals for various political reasons. Um, some people live in austere environments where there isn't a hospital nearby you do the best you can with what you got where you're at. Uh, wilderness medicine is a real thing. Long-term field care, prolonged field care is a real thing. We teach that stuff. And so I would encourage you to get trained again by us or any other good qualified trauma medicine provider, anybody that knows their stuff, go and take a class and learn so that you can keep the blood inside the body, you can maintain respirations and you can keep the casualty alive. So March pause. March, massive bleeding, airway, respiratory, circulation, head injury, hypothermia, everything else. Pauses, pain management, antibiotics, wounds, and splinting. This has been a cursory overview of all of this stuff. I hope that it has motivated you to take action, to do real stuff, to get good, competent, professionally curated trauma kits, not boo-boo kits, trauma kits, to deal with uncontrolled bleeding to go take training from qualified medical professionals, to train your church security team, to train your independent school district, to train your small business or your warehouse operation or your semi-truck logistics company, whatever you may have. Nine out of 10 preventable deaths in the United States of America are from uncontrolled bleeding. What a shame. Nine out of 10 people could still be walking around if we'd kept the blood inside the body. And again, we talk about these tragic school shootings and church shootings that are happening. 
nine out of 10 kids would still be here if proper medical intervention was applied in that moment of criticality. If people knew what they were doing and they had the tools in their toolkit to, doing, to do it, be a massive difference in the number of lives saved versus the number of lives lost. That's why I do this. This is what we're all about. Our mission statement at Refuge Medical is to save lives while in service to the Father's kingdom and experiencing the abundance of his provision and blessing. So I thank you for supporting us in that, joining us in that. If you have any questions about training, you can email sales at refugetraining.com. If you have any questions about kits, you can email sales at refugemedical.com. If you have any questions about the content that's been provided here, you can comment down below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the little bell icon. I appreciate y'all very much. Y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.